I'm getting ready to make one of my simple suppers, one of my go-to simple suppers. We love BLTs, especially in the summer when you've got fresh Cherokee purple tomatoes. Now, the tomatoes that we'll be using tonight didn't come out of our garden. Our big tomatoes are long gone. We've still got some Tommy Toes out there, but they come from a produce stand down the road, so I'm still hopeful they'll be good tomatoes. But I'm also going to make a very simple side dish to go with them. This is like one of the easy ones that's just easy to throw in the oven and not worry about. And it always turns out good and we all enjoy it. And so it's literally just onions and cheese, baked onions. Very, very simple recipe. Since it is one of my favorite recipes, I wanted to make sure it went into mine and Jim Casta's cookbook, and it did. I'll put the information for that cookbook down below if you've not picked up a copy or if you'd like more information about it. The name of it is Celebrating Southern Appalachian Food, Recipes and Stories for Mountain Kitchens. But it's so simple, and it's one of those recipes that you can make for a big crowd or you can make smaller. So I'm going to read you the recipe, but you'll notice right away, while well, I probably... As I've been prepping, I'm not making the entire recipe tonight since it's, it's just me and Matt mostly that'll be eating it. I'm not sure if Katie will be here or not. If she is, there'll still be plenty for her too, but I don't need enough for a big crowd. So baked onions with cheese. The recipe says you need five to eight onions sliced thin. Again, you can decrease or increase that. Now when I slice my onions, just to make it easier on me, I slice them down the middle once, so that way there's a flat side, and then I slice them. So they end up in um, half, like half slices instead of whole ones. You could do it either way, either way you'd want to. Salt and pepper to taste. You could add other spices too, but I just use salt and pepper. Three tablespoons of butter. Three tablespoons of water and then shredded cheese to taste. So as far as the cheese goes, I'll give you a little tip that I discovered many years ago. If you actually buy a block of cheese, if you like cheddar, that's what I'm using. I actually have white cheddar and orange cheddar tonight. But if you like whatever kind you like, if you buy it in block form and then you grate it yourself at home, it's two things happen. One, it's cheaper in the long run, but also it melts better. So if you're going to use it for a melting dish like this, that's really how you want to do it. You want to actually grate it yourself and you'll have way better luck with it, with it melting like you want it to instead of just kind of clumping up together. So we're going to add those sliced onions. I just have a bacon dish. I've buttered the inside of it. You could grease it with whatever, whatever you prefer. I'm going to season them with the salt and pepper. I'm going to dot with the butter, sprinkle with the water, and then I'm going to cover it and I'm going to bake. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. Um, you could check after 20 and see if they're to your liking, but I usually let it go about 30 minutes while it's covered. Then I uncover them, then I put the cheese on, and then I put it back in the oven for about 5 to 10 minutes to let that cheese melt and kind of get browned on top if that's how you how you like it. And of course you just need to remove it and scoff it up then. So I'm going to go ahead and salt and pepper my onions while they're in the bowl just to make it easier. Of course, the, what I'm looking for was in the drainer. So you could use, again, any kind of spices you prefer. We mostly just keep it pretty, pretty simple here. I'm sure garlic, garlic powder or garlic salt would be good. Give it a little bit more. It already smells so good. Once you start cutting up an onion, um, mm, just makes your whole house smell like you're really going to cook something delicious. Now, I used two big onions is all I was using uh, for tonight. You Again, you can, I love recipes like that. They're just so simple that you can kind of just make them smaller or larger as needed. You could even do it for one person. Good, do half an onion, you know, do as small as you want it to. So I'm going to put my onions in there. I may be wishing I've got a bigger dish, but I think I'm going to stay with this one all the onions then I'm going to then use my salt and pepper got my instead of three tablespoons of butter I've got about a tablespoon it might be a little bit more than a tablespoon I'm gonna just cut me some little I think I'm using no I'm not sorry say I'm using the wrong end of the knife but I'm not I'm just throw it in there on top And I'm going to add some of that 
water. Of course, the onions have juice on them too. I'm just gonna put about two tablespoons of water. And then, I'm gonna cover it and put it in the oven for those first 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna get it out and add the cheese. So I let the onions cook for 40 minutes instead of 30. I forgot about them. So they've been in there about 40 minutes and they're, they're all really tender. That might be the time, might be something you have to play around with. Decide if you want them really tender or if you want them with some bites still, still left in them. So now I'm just going to put the cheese over the top and the amount of cheese is just totally up to you. I may have shredded too much or maybe not. What the heck, I think I'll just put it all. And then I'm gonna put them back in the oven and I'm gonna leave them uncovered for about 10 minutes. Not our Cherokee reds, but hopefully the tomato is pretty good. Cherokee red, you say? Yeah, that's what Granny calls them, Cherokee purple, really. I've started calling them Cherokee reds because she does. Yeah. We love BLTs, though. We just use light bread. I have a whole series about light bread I'll link to, the different ways we use it. I didn't get you no salt or pepper, did I? I'm Takes a whole lot of pepper. Yeah, for you. If you can't see it, it ain't enough. Looks good, don't it? It does. They're always good. It's hard to beat an onion though. And then when you put cheese with it, it's just one of the good things. One thing bad about the peppers is we don't have as many as we did last year. Making that red and hot. No, I don't think so. I'm gonna get it if I can. Things. Oh, and I, I guess you saw, I made you some cookies. I don't know if you saw that or not. Oh, yeah. I smelled them when they was in the oven. Yeah. Well, they wasn't in the oven. It's on top of the stove. Or wherever they was at. Yeah. You cooked them somewhere. Right yeah, on top of the stove. Easy chocolate no-bake cookies. You can, you can whip those up quickly. I did that while I was cooking the bacon and the onions. It didn't take no time. It's a really easy recipe. I have a video I'll uh, share, and actually it's in the cookbook too, but it's a very simple recipe. I'm sure you've had them before too. They always remind me of growing up. That's our, my lunchroom, March Creek School. The lunchroom ladies make them, uh, made them in those days, so they always remind me of that. In fact, the recipe that I use actually came from a March Creek School cookbook. It's out of print. It's been years and years ago. Uh, I've had it pretty much the whole time me and Matt's been married. But it's just one the school did to raise money, you know. But the interesting part is the, and it's, I've used it so much for different recipes that it's dirty and stained. That's how you know your favorite cookbooks. Um, what's your favorite? Anyway, but the interesting thing is the recipe in it, which is very common. Lots of people have it. She didn't by no means develop it, but it is a girl that I went to school with. So I think she was probably sitting right beside me eating a chocolate chip, um, chocolate oatmeal cookie. And now all these years later, she liked it enough to put it in the cookbook. And then I like it enough that I've been making it. 
Of course, I've been making it the whole time. Me and Matt's been married now, but when I first first got the cookbook and realized it was her name, Melissa, I thought, oh, yeah, she she remembered them from those days too. I'm sure. Let's see if I can get a pepper. Get the little red one. Peppers are so good. They really go with something like this too. And I'm gonna get me some onions. Mm. You can just see that wonderful cheese and the onions got a little brown. Of course I'm gonna have to get me, get me a bite of those. Try to get some with some cheese too. I think I could eat that whole pan by myself. That could just be my supper. There's just something so hearty about onions if you're an onion fan like I am. I like onions raw. I like them cooked like this. I like them, of course, think about in meatloafs and uh, potato salad and different things like that. I really love them. I'm always reminded that um, Granny's told this story a million times to me. My big grandma, I can't really remember. I have a few memories of her, but not very many. Not very many at all. And by the time my memories that I can remember of her, she was sick most of the time in the bed. But Granny said she ate an onion every day because she thought it was good for her health. And I said, well, did she just eat it like an apple or did she? And she said, well, she would just chop it up, you know, and eat it like a raw onion with maybe beans and taters or whatever. Or sometimes she'd cook it. Uh, but always when she eats, she would make sure that she eats some onion because she thought it was really good for you, which they do say even today it's really good for you. So I hope you enjoy seeing how simple this little side dish is. It's very quick and easy and to whip up and put in the oven and kind of forget about until you got to put the cheese on it. But also it's really quick and easy as far as if you want to make it for a big crowd or you just wanted to make it for one person. It's so easy that it's easy to extend it or decrease it, uh, whichever need that you may have. And while it really goes good with something as simple as a BLT, it also goes great with, you think about if you had meat, maybe a meatloaf like I was talking about, a roast, something like that, even on a sandwich, if you wanted to put those onions with that cheese on some roast beef and make a sandwich, it's really limitless when you think about how to use the recipe. As always, I hope you'll drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia.